before. I will say that I am enjoying the discussion with all the legislators, and now we bring in Senator Tyler McCon, represents District 31, which includes Lauderdale, Newton, and Scott Counties. Uh, in the past, you've served as the chair of the Senate Forestry Committee and vice chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee. Senator McCon, good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Good afternoon, Gerard. You know, first off, I've got to do this before Rankin County gets me. You know, I picked up a little bit of Rankin County now, <laughs> so I want to go ahead and put that back in. Okay. We've got them on the list, too, now for District 31, but we're so happy to be here today. Appreciate you making that clarification uh, for us. I forgot that we've had a little bit of changing in that. Uh, and, of course, I've always enjoyed uh, talking to you, Senator. I was thinking about this earlier when I saw you on the schedule, whenever we do the remote at the Loggers Association. That's right. That's um, right. That's fascinating. Uh, the first time I did that a couple of years ago, all that sophisticated equipment is incredible, isn't it? And, and mean, that's a, a every other year event, and it's yeah. just amazing the number of people that come in here and the fact that forestry in general is now such a, a high-tech industry. Unbelievable. I mean, it, you know, it's just like in ag and anything else. We've continued to evolve that equipment where you can go in there with GPS and you can specifically determine where you're at. Uh, and just the fact that we've got such more... Uh, more proficient equipment. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. just it's amazing. But, you know, in general, we've got to do that. If we're going to continue to move the industry forward, we've got to keep going forward with, with making sure that we're utilizing all the fuel and we're not wasting anything, or we're utilizing all of the talent we've got there. We're not wasting anything because, unfortunately, uh, you know, our landowners are still hurting on selling their timber. Yeah. You know, when you climb in the cabs of one of those big machines and you look at that all-glass screen in front of you, <laughs> You just about got to have a degree in computer science to operate these machines these well, days. I tell you, it, it is amazing. If you've never been in one now, it, it's it's totally different from taking that chainsaw out there and putting yeah. them on a bob truck and taking them to the mill now. No doubt. And um, and the and the pay is very good in that industry as well. I, you know, I've, I've visited a lot of mills. Since, uh, since I was appointed, one of the things I wanted to do was go and visit our mills, visit with our landowners, go to the associations and find out exactly what we've got going on and what we need to do uh, for the industry. Uh, one of the things that amazed me was going to these mills and finding out these people working in these mills, some of these mills are, are fully air-conditioned now, yeah. which is, you know, it's great. And in Mississippi heat, if you've never been in a timber mill or Whew. a paper mill in the Mississippi heat in July, then then you've not experienced heat like those Brutal. guys have. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. That All, all of that has uh, certainly evolved quite a bit. Okay, so we're just getting underway down there at the Capitol. Uh, it's, uh, I said earlier, another day, another bomb threat. Uh, gosh, that's crazy. I, I just, I'll, I'll apologize in advance. I have referred to whomever, uh, these, these malcontents are as idiots. <laughs> I just will go ahead and say that. That's a little out of my character, but I, I've, I've moved to say that. This is ridiculous, and I hope we've seen the end of this, and then we get down to business. I, I hope we have, too. And, Gerard, you've always spoken the truth, so I don't think you're you're out of line with that <laughs> statement right now. Uh, <laughs> but what I'll say is I, I'm thankful that we, we did one thing over the past few years, and that's move forward our Capitol Complex District yeah. to get our Capitol Police out there to protect the people that are going in Good and point. out of that capital and out of all of our buildings. Good point. So the response we're getting, I'm, I'm very impressed with. Uh, Commissioner Tindall's been been really good about providing the resources for that. He has. I, I agree. And uh, so I, th I think that was a positive move on the part of our legislature. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a bit sad that it was necessary, but it was necessary. It, it was necessary. You know, the capital that is our capital. Whether you where you're at in Mississippi, that is your capital, and you want to know that you can come to your capital, you can view your capital, you can see your legislators, and you can know that you're safe there. Totally and that's agree. something I feel like we've done a great job of moving forward. I don't think we're totally there yet, but yeah. I think we're getting there. I agree. So I uh, appreciate you pointing that out. Okay, so we, uh, we're scheduled, I guess, to start appointing committee chair. When do you expect that to happen? What's the lieutenant governor said? Anything? You know, I, I wish I knew. Uh, I would love to know that we got them maybe tomorrow, but I, I have a feeling we're probably about a week out before seeing okay. that. Uh, okay. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of turnover, though, yeah. uh, in the body. Which seven is new senators, that seven, right? Yeah. Seven new senators. Yeah. And, and I'm fortunate to have one with me today just visiting and, and sitting in with us. Uh, Senator Rhodes from over at Rankin County is here yeah. with me. Another good Ryan ag Rose, guy yeah. with us. Yeah. Uh, so so we're excited to have those people in. And, and, and I tell you, they're going to be a good class. Yeah. Just, just talking to right. them and knowing that. Uh, but bringing those senators in and knowing that they're in for the best interest of Mississippi – I think we've got our team together, Gerard. Yeah. In general, our state and our capital 
has the team together to move forward and take a comprehensive look at what we need to do for the state of Mississippi for the next four years. Okay. And from that point forward, if you look at your new senators, your new representatives, we're in a second-term governor. We've got some great statewides. I think we're headed in the right direction, and I'm anxious to see what we can do. Right. Well, I, I certainly – I'm with you on the optimism. I appreciate that. And I, I've always believed that if you want good things to happen, you have to think about good things. You have to envision those things. You know, I used to coach youth baseball for many years. I'd always tell the batters, you want to visualize the ball coming off your bat going into the gaps, gap to gap. That's what I tell them when they're at the plate. Think gap to gap. And, it, and you can apply that same logic, I think, to what we're trying to do here in the, in the state. We've got to believe that, that there's nothing we can't achieve on a positive basis. And not just bury our head in the sand and say, oh, no, we can't do that. I agree. You know, people say, well, this is your first year in a term. Y'all aren't going to do anything, are you? And I beg to differ. I think we've got some great issues that we need to be dealing with. Uh, you know, we're, we're not there yet. We've yeah. done some great things over the last four years, and I appreciate the leadership of both uh, both houses to yeah. move that forward. Uh, but I'm anxious to see what we do this year. We okay. get those uh, committee chairs in there. I think we're going to see some movement on some, some big issues. What are you prioritizing, Senator? Uh, you know, I, I will always prioritize um, uh, my ag and forestry, uh, you know, uh, issues that are out there. So, so we're always going to be looking at, at – this year, the foreign ownership, to be honest with you, is going to okay. be one of the biggest things that we look at. Where do you stand on that? Uh, I stand that we're, we're headed in the right direction. You know, it's inherently important for us to move forward uh, assessing the situations that threaten the health, safety, and welfare of our people. Yeah. You know, both domestic and abroad, we, we're here to assess those threats. Uh, I think you're going to see, uh, coming from the commission or, or the committee that was put together, the study committee, uh, and from their report, uh, I think you're going to see some good legislation come forward okay. uh, to make sure that we balance the act of protecting our citizens and making sure that we don't destroy uh, development in the state of Mississippi. Key word being balance. Balance. And, and, and we really need to think about that in all of our lawmaking, honestly. I, and, I uh, agree. Uh, you know, and over the past three months, I, I've been very fortunate to work with, with our partners, whether it yep. be, you know, the Farm Bureaus or the Forestry Associations or, or whomever it may be, yep. uh, to keep working on that. And I think you're you're going to see a very effective product come out of that from all of the partners getting together. Okay. Sounds good. Um, some of the issues, of course, that kind of left over from, from prior um, sessions and certainly the prior term, uh, I'd, I'd say tax reform is one of those. We, we of course— Took a big cut at the income tax uh, in the state of Mississippi. We certainly welcome that. Uh, I think uh, certainly the speaker and the governor has made it clear that's his highest priority is to fully eliminate the income tax. Do you see any movement on just further tax reforms in the coming session? You know, I think you're going to see the Senate back up and say, hey, so what's the effect now? You know, we're seeing a change to people's income with interest rates running up and inflation running amok from the federal level. You know, on a state level, we've got to back up and say, hey, guys, we've got to do something about that as best we can. Yeah. I understand that uh, it's a federal issue that we're going to have a hard time reining in on a state level. Uh, but we do have to look and see where we're at from what we did. And, you know, we've got record uh, cuts from the past. And I don't disagree with moving forward. As long as we don't put it back on the landowner that's out there, your counties have got to be able to fund themselves yeah. uh, somehow. And I, I would hate to go up on our property taxes. We're already seeing property tax increases over the last year. And there's no doubt that there are a lot of folks out there that fear that, and, uh, and they've expressed um, opposition to any sort of increases right. in the property tax. Of course, that would primarily come in if, for some reason, the state cut its revenue to the point where uh, its contribution to education uh, would have That's to be right. reduced, and which would put more of the responsibility on the districts, the counties, essentially. That's, right. That's where we'd see likely you know, and, uh, and there's and the, infrastructure as well. The unfunded mandates that we really like to do as a legislature, send it back down to the county and city yeah. to handle. Yeah. Uh, you know, with PERS's increase on yeah. the contribution level, that's going to hurt your counties and cities already. Well, we need to dig into that. Uh, we got a break coming up here. If you can hang around, we'll certainly Absolutely. talk about that. But, yeah, I agree, and the, the, you know this, that – uh, mayors and city leaders, municipal leaders, they've all expressed concerns about that. They Absolutely. know this is going to be an additional expense that uh, they will have to bear, and they're looking for um, some support for the state. Right. Uh, from the state, I should say. We got uh, Senator Tyler McCon and his guest, Senator Brian Rhodes, here uh, from uh, the great county of Rankin. We're coming right back in the Element Well studio. Stay with us. 
Welcome back, everyone. We are live in the Element Well studio. We're visiting with Senator Tyler McCon. He, of course, represents District 31, Lauderdale, Newton, Scott counties, and also a little piece of Rankin now, right? That's you know right. You told me? That's okay. right. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on, as always. And, and uh, in the past, you've served as the uh, chair of the Senate Forestry Committee, vice chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee, which we should point out is a significant part of our economy. And, and it that's is. why it's important, right? 35, 39 percent, I think, uh, Ag Commissioner Andy Gibson, typically that's the figures he shares. And, and, and I think he's pretty close on his numbers there. We're, you know, we're so happy. Mississippi, you know, we can still grow. <clears throat> yeah. You want it grown, we can grow it for you. We, we send from the coast all the way up north. If you look at it from our seafood industry, moving up to our, our pine timber there in the Pine Belt area, you move on up into our Delta, we send out crops around the world. And that's something that's very important. Yeah. Much less poultry, which is uh, pretty big in Scott County where, where I grew up. Yeah, and I sure. was very fortunate to be raised on a poultry farm. whole bunch of uh, farms and, and processors. That's right. Uh, in Scott County over there. That's right. So. Uh, we, we're continuing to see the growth there. And, and we'd love to know in the future that maybe we can continue to build in uh, that processing facilities there in Scott County. To, to keep them there for the years to come. Yeah, big part of our economy for sure. So let's talk about uh, the ballot initiative uh, process. Of course, uh, you know that uh, uh, based on a ruling from our Supreme Court, it's been invalidated. So we don't have one here in the state of Mississippi. That that came about when it was contested after Initiative 65, which actually passed at the ballot box. It was contested, and the Supreme Court said, yeah, this thing really doesn't align with our Constitution, which uh, actually specified um, uh, the number of signatures that had to be gathered across five congressional districts. Right. We only have four. So that was uh, – I think that wasn't well thought out when they drafted that, unless it was intentional. I don't know. It's hard to say at this point. But um, – that comes up a lot, Senator. I hear from just the public anecdotally in general. They want right. to see that restored. What, what do you think? You know, I, I was very fortunate this, this week to be sitting down with another uh, companion of mine uh, in the Senate, and we, we had a little breakfast meeting, and we talked about this issue uh, ad nauseum there for a little bit. Uh, Senator Boyd and I have, have worked on this together over the past few years. Uh, as you know, I was in here a couple times last year uh, yeah. discussing that. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's going to go away. Okay. I think it's going to be That's there, to and uh, and I think it's going to continue to be debated uh, among your members. You've got a, a few new ones this time, and, yep. and I don't even know where they would stand on it. Yep. Uh, but I will say that the beginning uh, bill last year and the ending bill last year that eventually died – was substantial progress for the state. I think that's a good way to describe um, it. Yeah, I, I think we we hashed through a lot of things that were uh, were questionable and things that pe people didn't like. Um, I, I agree with you. There's a lot of people that do talk about it out there, but there's a lot of people that really don't have a lot of interest there. Yeah. Uh, you know, the biggest concern is what does special interest do with it? Because unfortunately, uh, a lot of legislation we do is really good for uh, the people. And then it gets um, utilized by special interest to maybe not be so good for the people. I think that's true. And so we'll see where that lands. But I, I, I get the feeling that's going to come up, that uh, the House likely to get something done. But the Senate may draft its own version like right. we've had in the past. And, and maybe we'll go to conference and hash that out and, and get something done. Uh, the lieutenant governor has indicated whenever I've talked to him that he supports – uh, the ballot initiative process, but he favors a higher signature threshold to to just make it more difficult, essentially, um, and so that it can't just be bought. Um, you know, it's kind of the way he describes it. And that's fair. I yeah. mean, when it was first put in, there was no Facebook. There was yeah. no electronic right. media here or mail going out. Uh, you know, you had to go door to door and you had to see that person and, you know, eye to eye and tell them, this is what we want to do. Yeah. And this is where I need you to sign. Yeah. That, now it's that's just true. a... You know, a, an email that's sent about 12 o'clock at night that's and right. somebody sees it and all of a sudden we've got a signature there. Yeah, I think that's right. So things have changed. Well, we'll see where that goes. Uh, any, any thoughts or ideas about uh, continuing to whack away at the at the income tax? Uh, you know, the governor has indicated that's his top priority is the full elimination of the income tax. A lot of people have expressed 
um, their advocacy for reducing or eliminating the sales tax on groceries right. uh, is a higher priority than the income tax. What do you think? Well, I, I like the idea of us working on the grocery tax a, a lot better. I mean, okay. we, we took a huge cut uh, on the income tax, you know, in this last four years. Yeah. Uh, I think we really should be doing something that does directly impact every Mississippian. Uh, there's not a Mississippian here that doesn't go to the grocery store and get a, a, a thing of milk or, or a loaf of bread every now and then or, or whatever it may be for their household, and that would go directly back to their pocketbook. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we of course, uh, have to watch that and make sure that whatever we do, we do uh, help and make the, uh, the counties and the cities whole from that income tax reduction. But if you look around, that directly impacts everybody. Yeah. That is an across-the-board tax cut, and that's something we really should be looking at. Okay. Well, we'll see where that goes. Um, uh, I know the governor said, you send me any bill that cuts taxes, I'm signing it. I mean, I've heard him say that before, so uh, I don't think he'd be upset one way or another. I think he actually believes that we could get something done on both, and it could be that we we have some – uh, some measure that phases in elimination of the income tax based on achievement of certain targets uh, from a budgetary perspective. So we'll see where all that goes. Uh, something else that um, certainly the Speaker of the House has, has talked a fair amount about is uh, school choice, education, freedom. Right. I think we're going to see some movement there, at least some, some deliberation at a minimum. Uh, what do you think about that? I would say the House and the Senate kind of have a different, different uh, take on that. What, you know, the one thing that we've not done is we haven't really had um, – we haven't had the bill really come forward yeah. in the past for us to have these discussions. That's true. So what I'm excited about is seeing this discussion begin. You, okay. know, I, you know, of course, we're going to see the, the public education advocates that are not going to be real thrilled about it. Uh, we're going to see, of course, the other side that's going to be pushing it. Yeah. And I think we're going to see some really good discussion come from that. Uh, what do I think at the end of the day? I don't know. But okay. what I'll say is that it is a – a comprehensive issue that does not, not – neither part exists in a vacuum. Yeah. And and that's something we've got to remember as we go forward. Uh, you're seeing school districts start to look at, hey, we don't need these buildings anymore. Maybe we can reduce our budget with the, the Jackson City Schools doing some things. And yeah. that's been Closing controversial. But you know what? It's something maybe they needed to do. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that's something we need to do is in general is look comprehensively about this and see what we need to do. Uh, to further these school districts. We've got some really good school districts, you know. Rankin in general has, has, has got some really good schools there. We've got some other schools around that maybe are not doing so well. Yeah. Uh, but we've got some good ones in counties. So okay. I don't think we should be going to the detriment of our teachers that are there doing their best to move forward and, and teach our kids. Uh, but I am anxious to see this discussion begin. Okay. Well, I, I, I agree with you. Any reforms, and, and uh, you know, I, I advocate for – uh, reasonable education choice, school choice, right. but but want to be clear. I'm, I don't support any reforms that would in some way harm existing good performing schools. We we don't want to do that. We right. don't we we don't want to tear them down or uh, impede them, hinder them in any way from continuing to perform in a positive way. Um, so there's, I think there's something we could do that, uh, again, going back to the word balance that you used earlier. Right. And, and what I've explained to the audience, uh, Senators, that it's not like there's a template or a model other than what's been implemented in other states. We're starting out with a blank slate here. We right. make it be whatever we want that can pass the chambers and get signed by the governor. So when you look at our charter schools, I mean, the charter schools that, that we have out there, how many of them are failing? Yeah. There, that's a problem, and, and there, there needs to be some analysis of that. Why exactly right. is that happening? I, I kind of have a theory that we end up uh, seeing the charter schools admit uh, the students that are coming from public schools where they weren't performing very well in the public schools. Now we're trying to get them in charter schools and catch up. But I agree, there certainly needs right. to be some investigation analysis. And then uh, I think there's some efficiencies in our public schools. I, I don't think there's any secret about that. Um, there are those who think that uh, we got too many districts and maybe some consolidation. So, but I agree with you. A comprehensive analysis of the entire public school ecosystem is necessary here right. uh, to do something meaningful. And, uh, and I'm a product of the public school. Yeah, uh, I'm very fortunate to go to, to to Morton High School and be a graduate of that that school, and we had a great class. Yeah. Uh, but we also need to be looking back, and as you said, to be seeing who's going to those charter schools. You know, we need to be sure that the kids in there that are that are progressing and are learning to the levels they need to be learning uh, are getting the attention to move forward, and the ones that are not are getting the attention to get caught up yeah. and not have one be the detriment of the other. 
the lieutenant governor, every time I've seen him speak, he, he's always put at the top of his list the idea of free community college. He thinks that is something that the state would benefit from. Uh, I know you don't know until you see the bill, but is this something that you feel like is going to come up? You know, if you go over to Lauderdale County, you've got Meridian's been offering tuition for their their uh, county for a number of years. Yeah, a great community uh, college. Great community college over there. We have an amazing community college system. No doubt. And anything we can do to encourage our people to go and utilize that system is something I'm for. Okay. Well, we look forward to visiting with you some more uh, as the session proceeds. Senator Tyler McCon. Over there in East Central Mississippi has been our guest. Appreciate you coming on, Senator. Thank you, Gerard. And thanks to you as well, Brian, for coming on. All right, we're stepping aside for a break. We're coming right back. In the-